Hello, it's another video by by Gav. I could start with the usual apologies of blah blah, I've not been around, etc, etc, but, you know, I think we all know by now that everybody has real lives outside of the internet and, um, and that we just do this kind of as and when we can. Um, so yeah, uh, since my last update, which was the an update on the Mosquito, um, I've done a bit more to it, it's had uh, a varnish now, it's had uh, an oil wash on top to help try and bring out the panel lines on the um, on the top of the, the camouflage areas. How well it's worked I don't know, I only have burnt umber oil paint, I think ideally I could do it with black, but then I'm always not really sure whether black is maybe going to be kind of too stark and too dark. Um, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see, I'll have to play about with that and see how it looks. Um, it, it's sitting up there on the work in progress shelf, so, alongside the Harrier, which I kind of got to the stage where I varnished it and then realised there was still some more paint touch-ups to do, and it sat up there since, and the Seafire, which is in the same position. Funny how I get these bigger planes and, and that, to that stage, and then they kind of just stay there. Anyway, the point of this video is I I bought this um, a short while ago now. I was just looking for a kit. Um, I'd heard kind of quite good things about these. Um, it's another German plane. I haven't done many German planes in the in the while, so I have the BF one hundred nine still to do. I haven't touched any of those kits, um, so I thought I'd get this. Um, yeah, I don't know, maybe I can combine them on a, on a diorama or something as well, who knows. So, it's the new tool, um, Airfix, Schmidt BF110, C-2 or C-4. Um, being a bigger kit, it's a top opening box, for those who care about such things. Um, you get two paint schemes, and one is a, there we go, I'll tell you there. One's from Northern France in 1941, one's a uh, Russian front one from 1941. I might go with that one purely because it's a bit more interesting than the other one. Um, and it'll give me a chance to try out kind of a slightly kind of dirty white kind of scheme. And it's got the wasp on the front, which is just pretty cool. So I'll probably be going for that one. Uh, and uh, so yeah, Excuse me, I'm going to have to do this one handed. So I've got things open. Hopefully that'll make life easier. So we'll start with the kit. It comes on one, two, three sprues of grey plastic. Um, it's it's crisply moulded. Uh, there's no obvious flash. Uh, yeah, there's a tiny little bit of kind of raggedy edges around. What I think of the undercarriage doors there. But you know, you have to clean parts up anyway, so it's not the not in the world. No major flash. No obvious. Miss moulding of um, you know mould slippage or anything. Wheels have got a tread pattern on them and they're weighted, which is quite cool. Um, separate exhaust. They are the inside of the wheel wells, I believe. So nice rivet detail. A bit, maybe a couple of bits of uh, whether I bother or not. I don't know, but I feel sure that if you've got the skills or you, the, the 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 feel the need, you could easily add a bit more detail in there in terms of um, some. Uh, scratch bit of detail, some some extra wiring, etc. There are the nose cannons. See if I can put this on a white bit. There we go. Uh, nose cannons. I think I believe they're all meant to be different lengths. Um, I guess that's just how they fit inside the inside the nose. Their the muzzle flash are quite, you know, they're quite nicely molded. And that's the rear machine gun just below it. It's a little bit soft and a little bit pathetic looking. So I have to wait and see about that. How it, I mean, in the end, it'll probably look okay. Uh, we've got props, radio loop, which is slightly bent actually, but it's not broken, so it shouldn't be too problem. Um, main gear legs, um, could do with a little bit of, you know, some brake lines or something might well be. Nose cone, nicely detailed. Engine nasals. Panel lines are quite deep for those who care about such things. I quite like it, but I know that a lot of people think they're a bit too trench-like. Um, main rear. F Elevator, cockpit tub, pretty bland, um, nice and moulded but pretty bland. 
then what else have we got? So next brew drop tanks, bombs, bomb racks, pretty pretty, pretty plain looking trestle things. Fusilized halves, you know, obviously really big um really pretty big um panel lines there. Although they're quite prominent on the real thing I believe along the back of here, so uh, second rear wheel because it doesn't fold away, so I believe the first one's weighted. Uh, yeah, it's slightly weighted the first one, so I guess that's an in-flight one, which is quite cool. Bombs. I don't know where that part is yet. And um, more drop tanks and stuff. So that's fuselage half sand bombs. Oh, on the inside of here, there's no wall detail because I believe it's like a cockpit tub, um, which you saw. So it's pretty plain. Now I'll get onto that in a minute. Wings, uh, again nicely moulded, there's some ribbing detail on the inside of there for the wheel wells which is quite cool. Again pretty deep panel lines and kind of fabric detail on there so that should pick up quite nicely with paint, it should be quite good. Um, there's two crew figures with separate arms, uh, I'll probably not include them. They're not too badly moulded actually, they're alright, they, they look a little bit different. I don't know whether they're new mouldings or not, I don't know, but they look not too bad. I'll see if focus. Focus. It's upside down, but you get the idea. So we'll she have to see how this kit goes together. Clear parts in its own bag. From what I can see, nice and clear. Not quite thick, but um, yeah, not too bad. Quite nicely raised um, detail, which is quite good because I'm not a fan of using masking tape to mask canopies, mainly because I'm terrible at it and I can't bother cutting all the parts out. Um, and I don't have the money to spend on, you know, Edward canopy masks and things. So I tend to use liquid mask, but that which is work which works fine. But it works also it works even better then when you've got nice raised um, parts for it to to sit up against because it's quite hard to make it into a nice neat square. For example, if you if you don't if you've got some nice raised detail to to butt it up against, then that's good. I'll not bother showing you the instructions that you're usually are fix. Uh, they're quite thick actually. So uh, stencil detail on the back. Uh, let's see if I can open this up. I can't remember if the things are in colour or not. Oh yeah, they are. So the paint, the paint schemes are in colour, which is quite nice. So that's the first one, and the second one, which um, it's kind of this, got these nice mottled areas on it as well as the camouflage and stuff. So that should be quite interesting to paint. Um, you know, and you get to put in these nice wing tips, nice yellow wing tips, and a nice big yellow band around it, and this cool wasp thing on the nose. <coughs> uh, what else have we got in here? Decals, um, as with sorry, as with all Airfix's new stuff done by Cartograph, nice registers, quite a few stencils on this one actually. You can see in that big panel there, uh, nice colourful ones for the for the the markings, nice and colourful. Good, so that's that. So what else I was going to show you regarding the cockpit is that for some reason I decided it would be a good idea to spend some money on some aftermarket stuff, which I don't usually do. And so I bought this, which is Edward's interior kit for the BF110. It's actually for the B version, and I've got the C version here, but I don't believe for a minute that the cockpit changed huge amounts. And I'm not a rivet counter, and I don't care. Um, I couldn't, this is the only one I could find anyway. Now, this set did cost me just a bit more than the actual kit did, which is obviously a big problem with aftermarket stuff. But, the cockpit on this is pretty bland, and I think this, looking at this, this is a really comprehensive set. I'm scared to try and work with it. I've never worked with such things before, but it will be it'll be a nice um, a nice change. So uh, basically, this builds up into a cockpit tub. Uh, you know, the main tub here, various details. It uses some kit parts. I mean, that's apart from the kit. Um, uh, nice instrument panel. Again, kit part for the the stick. Um, you have to add a bit of plastic rod, which I'm not entirely sure if I've got, but I feel sure I could probably get some off somebody. Um, it's just, the detail in this is crazy, and there's a lot of folding, so I'm going to have to look at some videos on how to work with photo etch. So as you can see, in the kit seat, seat belts and stuff, so it builds up into a complete tub, which then into, goes into the kit. 
you know, canopy surround, gun sight, uh, some extra details for the rear MG, gun sight, uh, grills, all sorts of stuff. Uh, extra ribbing detail inside the um, undercarriage doors, there's uh, seat belts for the other seat, radiator flaps. Uh, oh, there is brake lines here actually, so that's a good thing. I don't have to make them brake lines and are they the oleo bits, the little sort of suspension thingies. Anyway, um, you know, the rest of the brake line hub detail, uh, even the little suspension part for the rear wheel. Uh, stuff for the bombs if you want. Oh, it's just trim tab things. I'm just astounded. You get uh, just as well, it doesn't matter that this part's broken, you should actually get a thinner uh, photo edge version instead for that. Um, radio antenna loop thing and smaller antenna there and I think that's the box that goes under the aerial mast that sticks out the top of the canopy I mean and the little things, now these come, I mean I'll show you in a sec but these parts are going to be a pain in the arse to fold up but anyway so I'm quite excited about that because I think it'll help the, the kit look really good so there's all those parts but then there's also oh, that's just an instruction sheet on how to use them because some parts are self-adhesive which is quite cool so let's take a look. So we got these little bits, kind of clear acetate bars. I think that's for like the gun sight thing. Um, we've got the main sheet here. I mean, that's look at the size of it. It's tiny. The main cockpit tub. So it's going to only be. I mean, that's not a centimeter and a half or something across the way. You know, brake lines are really fine. <coughs> But it should look really good when it's done. <coughs> Excuse me. And the two self adhesive bits. So on this one, we've got I think that's like the, the front of like radio box detail, um, and various kind of stuff that goes around the cockpit instruments and and this that and the other. And um, we've got pedals, seat belts which are pre-colored. Yeah, this stuff's all pre-colored as well, which is quite cool. That stuff, the other stuff's not. This stuff is. Um, seat belts, uh, this stuff. My fingers getting in the way. Instrument panels, uh, the, the the rudder pedals, all sorts of stuff. I mean, like right down to things like so. These here are actually the MG drum mags, which is pretty damn cool for the spare MG for the rear MG, which runs off drum mags. Anyway, that's uh, enough chatting away. I've been talking around for for nearly thirty minutes. <clears throat> so this kit will not be started for a while yet, but I thought I'd just do a quick unboxing so you see what's in that kit if you want, and also just for this uh, for this um, Edward photo etch set for anybody who's interested. It's it's a really comprehensive set, and I think it's really going to make what it looks like, and it'll be an already nice model. Where the main thing that I feel is lacking is in the cockpit. I think that's just going to add add a you know brilliant little touch, and obviously then little things like um, you can I mean you can see them on the box all these little trim tab things and aerials which are not actually including the plastic kit you can now add them without having to scratch build them for those who don't have the skills to do that like myself so i'm going to stop waffling now next time you hear from me will probably be with an update either on that or it might be an actual flames of war update because i still do have my africa core i did get um i got them sold but the guy i sold them to then said well i'll give you a bit of extra if you want me if you would um finish painting them so I said, well, okay then. So um, so I've been working on the the vehicles um, to bring to get them painted and uh, so I can get them sent off to him. Um, and I think that's about it. So there's a general update on what I've been up to and unboxing for this. And I'm going to shut up because that's nearly 15 minutes now of your time that I have taken up waffling. So thanks for watching. Please, if you if you want, hit the the like the subscribe button but mainly you know leave a comment I, I like hearing from the comments and I try and reply to people and um, and I will see you in the next one thanks very much bye